what's the most beautiful idea in computer science or theoretical computer science to you? Like what just yeah. early, early on in your life or in general have captivated yeah. you and just grabbed you? I think I'm going to have to go with the idea of universality. Uh, you know, if you're really asking for the most beautiful. I mean, uh, so universality uh, is the idea that, you know, you put together a few simple operations. Like in the case of Boolean logic, that might be the AND gate, the OR gate, the NOT gate, right? And then your first guess is, okay, this is a good start. But obviously, as I want to do more complicated things, I'm going to need more complicated building blocks to express that. Right. And and that was actually my guess when I first learned what programming was. I mean, when I was, you know, an adolescent and I someone showed me uh, uh, Apple Basic and, and, and you know, uh, GW Basic, if uh, oh, wow. any, any anyone listening remembers that. OK, but, uh, you know, I thought, OK, well, now, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I thought I felt like um, this is a revelation. You know, it's like finding out where babies come from. It's like that level of, you know, why didn't anyone tell me this before, right? But I thought, okay, this is just the beginning. Now I know how to write a basic program. But to, you know, really write a, an interesting program, like, a, you know, a video game, which had always been my, my dream as a kid to, you know, create my own Nintendo games, right? <laughs> that, you know, but, I, you know, obviously I'm going to need to learn some way more complicated form of programming than that, okay? But... You know, eventually I learned this incredible idea of universality. And that says that no, you throw in a few rules and then you can you already have enough to express everything. Okay. So for example, the and, the or, and the not gate uh can all or in fact even just the and and the not gate, right, or even exactly. just even just the NAND gate, for example, uh is already enough to express any Boolean function on any number of bits. You just have to string together enough of them. So you can right? build a universe with NAND gates. You can build the universe out of NAND gates. Yeah. Uh you know, the the simple instructions of basic are already enough. At least in principle, you know, if we ignore details like how much memory can be accessed mm -hmm. and stuff like that, that is enough to express what could be expressed by any programming language whatsoever. And the way to prove that is very simple. We simply need to show that in BASIC or whatever, we could write a an interpreter or a compiler for whatever is other programming language we care about, like C or, or Java or whatever. And as soon as we had done that, then ipso facto, anything that's expressible in C or Java is also expressible in BASIC. Okay, and... So this idea of universality, you know, goes back uh, at least to Alan Turing in the 1930s when, you know, he uh, uh, um, wrote down this incredibly simple pared down model of a computer, the Turing machine, right? Which, uh, you know, he pared down the instruction set to just read a symbol, you know, go move, write a symbol, move to the left, move to the right, uh, halt, change your internal state. Right. That's it. Simple. Okay. And anybody proved that, um, you know, this could simulate all kinds of other things, uh, you know, and so, so in fact, today we would say, well, we would call it a Turing universal model of computation that is, you know, just as it has just the same expressive power that basic or uh, Java or C++ or any of those other languages have, mm -hmm. uh, because anything in those other languages could be compiled down to Turing machine. Now, Turing also proved a different related thing, which is that there is a single Turing machine uh, that uh, can simulate any other Turing machine if you uh, uh, just describe that other machine on its tape, right? And likewise, there is a single Turing machine that will run any C program, you know, if you just put it on its tape. That, that, that's a second meaning of universality. Mm -hmm. First of all, that he couldn't visualize it, and that was in the 30s, I yeah, think. Yeah, the 30s, so that's, that's right. That's before computers really, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how, I wonder what that felt like. Yeah. Uh, you know, learning that there's no Santa Claus or something. Because uh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if that's empowering or paralyzing because well, it it doesn't uh, give yeah. you any, inst it's uh, like you can't write a software engineering book and make that the first chapter and say, we're done. 
Well, I mean, I mean, right. I mean, I mean, in in one sense, it was this enormous flattening of the universe. Yes. Right. Like I had imagined that there was going to be some infinite hierarchy of more and more powerful programming languages. You know, and then I kicked myself for you know for having such a stupid idea. But apparently, Girdle had had the same conjecture in the thirties. Oh, good. And then you know, you're in then good he company. Was, well, you know, and then and then and then, and then, Tor, and then, and then Girdle read Turing's paper and he kicked himself and he said, "Yeah, I was completely wrong about that." Okay, but um, um, but you know, I had thought that you know may, maybe maybe where I can contribute will be to invent a new, more powerful programming language that lets you express things that could never be expressed in BASIC. Yeah. Right, and you know. And then, you know, how would you do that? Obviously, you couldn't do it itself in basic, right? But, uh, uh, but you know, there is this incredible flattening that happens once you learn what is universality. But then it's also um, uh, like uh, um, um, an opportunity because it means once you know these rules, then, you know, the sky is the limit, right? Then you have kind of the same weapons at your disposal that the world's greatest programmer has. It's now all just a question of how you wield them. Right, exactly. Right. But so every problem is solvable, but some problems are harder than others. And well, yeah, the, there, there's the question of how much time, you know, well, of how hard is it to write a program? And then there's also the questions of what resources does the program need? You know, how much time, how much memory? Those are much more complicated questions, of course, ones that we're still struggling with today.